Hello. Can you hear me? Welcome to Phenomenology Club. Basically, the moment I've been waiting for for a long time now. Finally, something has happened. A current event where maybe, maybe I have something useful to say. <laughs> Can you hear me? Someone, please just give me validation. This discussion is going to be so, so difficult. Everyone, whatever drugs you like to do, just do them. Even if you're like, should I do them? I don't know. Do it. Just fucking do it. Because we're about to get deep. And I'm going to need all of your fucking help, okay? So... First of all, for those of you who may not know what's up with this fucking banana, right? Actually, no. First of all, let me give a shout out to Delilah. uh, Because the last episode that I did started with an appeal to my audience. You wonderful people who gather here from time to time and listen to my dumb fucking bullshit. Delilah suggested... Amidst a few other people making suggestions, when I asked for suggestions for how I could improve the format of of this series, The Art of My Own Arguments, Delilah suggested I write notes beforehand, and I found that to be a very useful suggestion. Thank you, Delilah. I've made notes, and actually... <laughs> I feel as if I have just... First of all, I mean, I feel as if I've made some amazing realizations that I'll share with you in a moment. But yeah, thanks, Delilah. Shout outs to you. So let's talk about this fucking banana. Okay, what happened? Especially for people who might be listening in the future. You know, because like, this audio recording is literally a thing in and of itself. And a thing that can be played back at times later than the time it is being transmitted to you now live. So, you know people want it and people might not know what the fuck is up with this banana people people already might not know so basically art basil basil how the fuck do you say it does anyone know any of you italian <laughs> how you say basil what the fuck why is it even called that does anybody know shit this is the stuff i should have looked up art basil which is basically this fucking art extravaganza that happens i believe once a year in miami Everyone's just on massive amounts of cocaine looking all the at all the fucking art, right? Um, at Art Basel this year, there was a piece of art um, by artist named Maurizio Catalan, who obviously is Italian, uh, presented by the gallery owner, Emmanuel Perotin, who I'm assuming is also... Italian. I'm not pronouncing this correctly, I'm, but I'm looking at the spelling. I'm pretty fucking sure it's Italian. Um, at the Periton Art Gallery, basically sold a piece of art that was a banana duct taped to a wall um, for $120,000. Shit, I actually don't even know who buy it, bought it. But apparently it was purchased. Somebody at least verified that they would make the purchase. I'm not sure if they had made it at the time it was announced that someone agreed to purchase this thing for $120,000. This banana duct taped to the wall that you could see in the thumbnail, right? And it was called The Comedian. And in doing my research... <laughs> which was basically like, I don't know, 25 minutes of Googling. Please, anybody, tell me if you found out something else that uh, greatly influences our discussion here. But basically, um, something I found out when researching this piece was that, um, I think I said this already, it's titled The Comedian, which already gives us some sort of hint into a into what Maurizio was thinking here. He considers himself a bit of a jokester, don't you, Maurizio? Um, on top of that, there was actually, it's actually an addition of three. This one banana that sold for 120000 there were, 
I mean, this this one source is giving me kind of conflicting information. It says, I'm reading from the Miami Herald right now. It says it comes in an edition of three with two artist proofs. I'm not sure if that means that every incarnation of the of the uh, comedian had separate proofs, but I believe what they're saying here, because I read also in an article on CNN, that this man, Maurizio, has already sold this piece uh, to somebody who, like, actually, like, took the wall that the banana was duct taped to, or, like, out of whatever other gallery it had already been presented in, and, you know, purchased it for, I don't know how much they purchased it for, but I believe it was also an absurd amount of money. Um, so this thing already has existed in multiple incarnations. The one that we were witness to sold for $120,000 uh, in this Periton Gallery in Miami. Um, okay, this is also important. Are you ready? It comes with a certificate of authenticity and, get ready for this, owners can replace the banana as needed. Store that in your mental file cabinet because i feel like that will become very important in our discussion of this fucking banana art owners can replace the banana as needed so what ended up happening was i believe yesterday i don't know time is an illusion i believe it was yesterday a man a brave solitary man rose from the crowd of art spectators <laughs> And approached this piece, the banana piece, this man named David Datuna, who I think is also Italian. Like, I'm starting to think that there's an Italian art mafia. Though, actually, I don't know. Does anyone know what David Datuna is? David Datuna bravely rose up from this sea of art spectators, approached the banana, took it from the wall, and announced... That he would be doing performance art. Which he has called. Hungry artists. And David ate. The fucking. Banana. <laughs> David no. And anyone who's seen this video. Of David eating the banana. If you haven't please watch it. Cause it's really funny. I mean he's just. He's just very cheery. And like like gives no fucks. It's not aggressive at all. He just seems like a very pleasant. A uh, man <laughs> who just like, you know, he seemed resolved to do this thing. I'm sure he thought about it probably ever since the day before when he saw this thing. I don't know how long he was aware of the existence of this art piece. Uh, but he ate the fucking banana and he called it performance art. And then <laughs> the video is very, <laughs> the video is very funny um, because he <laughs> gets escorted into a back room. Where people are like, David, why did you do that? And he's like, it's performance. And, and you can hear the art gallery owners being like, no, David, it wasn't performance. That was a bad thing you did, David. <laughs> oh, I love it. Okay, so, so we have a lot to talk about. Okay, and let's end the summary of what happened. This is important, too, and something we need to come back to. The owner of the gallery... Oh, fuck, what's his name? Let me find it, just to be, uh... Just to be thorough. Shit. Hold on, I just had it. I have so many links open. Fuck, maybe I'll find it later. The only guy I think didn't sound Italian... <laughs> who is one of the gallery owners... He's probably, like, a co-owner. He said that... He gave a statement on what happened... He said that the art piece was not destroyed because it was the idea of the banana that was the art or was integral to the art. I mean, his wording was pretty vague. Um, no, you know what? We're going to have to pull up this quote. Give me like 15 seconds. I'm the fastest typer this side of the Hudson. Brrr. Um, Yeah, we need to make sure that we have the exact quote we can't fuck this up here because this is very important how we're gonna figure out how to do this art i saw fucked fucked on honix asked what happened with the peel that is a great question actually can can one of you maybe if you're if you're here um pull up the video and let us know that's really important we're gonna need to know that definitely 
What happened to the peel? I don't remember seeing him discard it in the video. I believe he carried it into the back room. Um, we should know this. <laughs> okay, here we go. I have the official quote from um, Lucien Terrace. Oh, shit. He sounds Italian, too. What's going on? This is weird. I don't know how I feel about this. There are a lot of Italians in Miami. Are they not Italian? Miami's full of, like, Cuban people, right? Are these people all Cuban and, like, I'm, like, mistaking something? I don't know why. Because they got, like, double R's and stuff in their spellings. I don't know what's going on. Maurizio has to be Italian. Come on. Anyway, this quote is by Lucien Terrace. He did not destroy the artwork. The banana is the idea. <laughs> the banana is the idea. What the fuck does that mean, Lucien? Well, good thing we're here to talk about it. This this is heavy. First of all, I'd like to hear from you guys. Um, do we like the piece? You guys like the piece? Can I get some feedback? How do we feel about the piece? Just 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 sound off, cause I'm very curious. When I first heard about this piece, I was ecstatic. <laughs> I love it, and I don't love it because I think it was necessarily insightful or original or anything i just love the art world continuing on with its dumb fucking bullshit i don't care why it does it or where it does it or for what purpose anymore i don't care i have no hopes that the art world is ever going to become a thing that i hold in high esteem personally anymore so i just enjoy to see the bullshit it brings me joy and exhilaration so i was i was so happy you don't like it shit i wouldn't say i like maurizio maurizio but i love that this happened i love it and i love that people are talking about it i love it and you know what i really love too i love that i didn't see a lot of people upset either when the banana first presented itself or the pe person eating it <laughs> people seem to love the fact that the fucking banana existed which i like because i feel like that's a new development in uh, this history of art consumption and how we treat such things. Usually I feel like people would be like, oh, come on, this is art. But people are like, this is so stupid. I fucking love it. That's how I felt. So anyway, this guy Maurizio, when you look him up, which I did again for like 10 minutes on Wikipedia because I don't care. Actually, no, I did look at his art piece. I mean, it's all so direct not his art piece his art website it's all so derivative like basically you look at any of his pieces they're incredibly boring they all kind of like fit this same format like look i did something weird and i put it in a gallery the nicest looking piece he probably had was this one i don't know the name but you can see it on his website i'll pull it up right here um where basically it was like a, a series of decapitated taxidermied horse taxidermied horses where they're they were mounted to the gallery wall in such a way that like where their neck was removed um they were hanging it reminded me of that movie the cell and it reminded me of matthew barney and damien hearst so i'm like whatever maurizio your whole thing is like doing other people's shit he has this other famous piece called la nona aura which is like a little sculpture of the pope getting crushed by a meteor like okay who made this man famous i don't know but if you read his wikipedia thing it's basically like describing how this man is essentially a jokester a quote from wikipedia <clears throat> Humor and satire are at the core of Catalan's work. This approach has often seen him labeled as an art scene jokes, joker or prankster. Clearly, I mean, he made this piece called The Comedian and uh, fucking hung it on a wall. I want to know, do you guys think that um, the banana specifically was picked for this piece because I just had this thought, especially with Fucked on Honix asking where the peel went. I didn't even think of this. This is like a common kind of trope in a lot of comedy, especially like vaudeville stuff where like someone slips on a banana peel and goes, whoa. I wonder if that had anything to do with why he picked a banana. I honestly suspect not because just looking at all of his other work, I'm not sure if he puts that much 
thought into these kinds of things. Another piece that he has, which is very famous and relevant to our discussion, well, I don't know how famous this guy is. He's clearly famous. He sells his work for a ton of money, or, I mean, compared to the rest of us. Uh, He has a piece called America, which is a golden toilet. Like, okay. Um, And, of course, this piece of work instantly brings to mind the famous Marcel Duchamp piece, Fountain. Um... Clearly, this piece is referencing that piece. And anyone who's not familiar, what the fuck, come on. But I'll tell you, Fountain was a piece by Marcel Duchamp, uh, where basically this man, I don't know what year it is, let me look it up. Fastest fingers this side of the Hudson. Um, He put a, a urinal, toilet, urinal, toilet, urinal, do you say those words together? He put it in a gallery and was like, this is my art, this toilet. And it was called Fountain, and he did this in 1917, and it was a big fucking deal. People were like, oh my god, I can't take all the fucking art. Also, fun factoid, um, I don't even really want to share this, because I don't know how I feel about it as a woman. But something I became aware of, like, last year, and something someone reminded me of today so you know I feel a little pressured to share this information just because you know if it exists and I know about it I feel my duty to all my fellow humans to share apparently this piece was actually a woman's idea and people say that I mean he was like good friends with this woman she was another artist I believe it is said that she even like put the uh famous signature on the piece because it's signed by someone named R. Mutt, which I'm sure like ties into the art fucking lore that I don't care about um and uh yeah apparently she thought of it and he stole her idea so whatever I don't really care about that like whatever people be stealing stuff but just so you know look it up if you're interested anyway let's move on I think that we need to, if we're going to try to analyze this piece and get really fucking deep and get to the core of what the fuck is going on here with this fucking banana, we need to first agree, especially since some people seem to be new in here, we need to agree about what the fuck art is. And we've talked about this many times on Phenomenology Club, and we essentially have a definition here. And I'm going to give it to you so you're familiar with it. And also feel free to raise any uh, any feelings that you have that might conflict with what I say here. So essentially, here at Phenomenology Club, we define art in very simplistic terms because that is the use of defining words, right? Finding the thing that we can all agree on. Whether or not art is more than what I'm about to say, I think we can all agree that it is at least uh, what I'm about to say. So, art. What is art? Art is essentially a thing that is a human creation and presents itself as being a thing to be judged for its aesthetic qualities, right? These things are essential to an art piece. Firstly, the fact it needs to be created by a human individual. Well, maybe not a human. Maybe an animal could create one, but we're not going to go there right now. It needs to be created consciously by some sentient quote-unquote being. And secondly, it's created to offer something to be judged for its aesthetic qualities right i think that these are really the only two things that are essential to saying a thing is art the presentation of a thing and the thing itself and when for example there is nobody to present this thing the thing itself is in itself a presentation am i right if you find a painting in a flea market even though the artist is not here to say look this is my art i recognize because of its aesthetic presentation, that this was a thing created for an aesthetic presentation, and I understand its purpose. In that way, every art piece almost offers a justification in and of itself for why it should exist, right? Do we agree? Because I'm about to move on. 
I think that that's pretty, like, reasonable, right? What the fuck could you agree about, huh? Well, actually, I mean, you will find a lot of conflict here. Because, like, let's think of this piece, Fountain. A lot of people will say, that's not art. That's just a fucking toilet and some stupid French guy put it in a gallery. I agree with you, but I would still say it's art. It's art that you don't like. It's art that you find to be bad. But can you say it's not art? I mean, you can try, but on what grounds? I think most people will agree. It's art. You don't have to fucking like it. But someone said it's art. They created it to be art. It's fucking art, okay? 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 Fuck you! So. <laughs> Two people just signed off. I was kidding. I really care about if you think it's art or not. So clearly, a thing like this is art, okay? The fountain is art. Let's think about the fucking banana, okay? Because there's so much going on here. We need to find out exactly what is the art, right? What happened here? Let's go through a timeline of this fucking banana, okay? So, we know for a fact that Maurizio Catalan has created multiple proofs of this thing. And I think that... If I'm reading the CNN article correctly, he has also sold the proofs for this final piece, The Comedian, right? So, oh, I, I just looked at the chat and lost my focus. This is taking so much focus. I literally drew charts over here. Like, you don't even understand how confusing this art is, okay? So let me stay focused. Let me stay focused. Please help me, too. I need your help. I really need your help here. This is so hard. <laughs> okay, you ready? So, what's the art? So, we know that Maurizio has duct taped this banana to the wall, right? And I assume that this banana duct taped to an art, based on how I just defined art, was art ever since he decided it was so. Am I right? Because you can duct tape a banana to a wall in your home by yourself, if you don't call it art, maybe you just like like the banana up there, you know. <laughs> maybe you got and you want to have it there for easy access a little bit later or something. I don't know. Who am I to judge? That's not necessarily art, but it is art as soon as you say that it is, right? Based on our definition, no matter how stupid this fucking art piece is, it is art. So it's been art ever since he duct taped it to a wall, I think, right? Is that reasonable? Do we agree? Can I get some yeses, noes? We gotta move quickly. There's a lot There's a lot to go through here. This is what I think. Okay. So. Clearly, though. Based on what we just said. The art is not necessarily just the thing in and of itself. It's also the presentation, right? So. For one. Maurizio duct taping this banana to the gallery wall, that in and of itself is a presentation, right? It has taken on some characteristics in its presentation, something that is definable. This banana has been duct taped to the gallery wall, right? Okay, it's art. We got it. It's art. Um, but then, as soon as somebody basically says that they will purchase this thing for $120,000. This, like, completely transforms the piece, right? If you just, like, duct tape a banana to a wall, right, and say this is my art, a lot of people will be like, Haha, I went to art school too, right? But somebody says, I'm going to buy this thing for $120,000. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Wait a second. This just got super art. Someone just flipped the art switch all the way up to fucking 10 in here, am I right? Clearly, the piece has become incredibly transformed just by this new movement. Right? Am I right? So what has happened here? The thing in and of itself hasn't been changed, but it feels like it has. And thinking about this, it's like, okay, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. Wait a second. I I have an idea. <laughs> what if I mean this piece is so it's so reliant on this presentation, right? 
Like, everything about it is about the presentation, right? We have the banana in and of itself. This duct tape banana. This banana duct taped to a wall, right? Okay, we have that. But, like, is it really about the banana duct taped to the wall? Or is the thing that is ultimately more art the fact that somebody did it and said that it's art? In that way, I feel like this piece is kind of performance art. Is this piece performance art from the jump? What do we think? What is performance art? What makes the thing performance art and what makes the thing just regular art? Hmm? And I'm thinking this also about the fountain and this is where I felt like holy shit like I just solved and I just solved the thing. <laughs> I think that the fountain it's also performance art. Because it's not about this fucking urinal, is it? It's about the fact that some French douchebag decided to show up and be like, this is my art. Without that, without that whole aspect, like, you know, you know? But it doesn't even need to be Marcel Duchamp. It was 1970, 17. It could have been anybody probably at that point, And people would have been like, wow. But of course, this thing has happened many times from then until now. Because, you know. One trick pony. I would say that the fountain is performance art. And I would say also that this is performance art, right? But it's unique in that clearly there's a thing in and of itself. But that's, I think, would also be true for performance art, right? Like, what is the thing in and of itself for performance art? To consider, like, one of the most piece, most famous pieces of performance art that I'm asked over and over about again, and we've spoken about many times on this channel, Marina Abramovic's piece, Rhythm Zero, right? That's obviously performance art. I mean, everybody agrees. Uh, it's a presentation of a thing, her performance, and her performance, I would say, is the thing in and of itself. And this relied on physical objects and materiality as well, you know? What would that piece be without a loaded gun held to her head? And what would that piece be without someone cutting her with a knife or doing this or that or whatever the fuck they did to her, right? So that also was based in some kind of materiality, just as this piece is. I think it's pretty reasonable to say that this is a performance piece. The banana is important obviously it's an integral part of the piece but ultimately i would say that this is a performance art piece do we all agree i need to make sure we all agree this is so important to me you don't understand you don't fucking understand how much i care right now do you agree everyone is it performance art please tell me please Well, I got one yes. Okay, that's good. It's from Fucked on Honix, who's a very intelligent person. So I'm just, that's good enough for me for now to continue. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> so, we have the, oh, we gotta know. Please tell us why no. Why is it not? Um, but I'm gonna continue for now. So, the banana is duct taped to the wall in the gallery. It's already this presentation of a thing that's unique and we have decided that we believe it's accurate to characterize this presentation as a performance art piece. The Comedian by Maurizio Catalan, some Italian douchebag, right? Okay, next. The piece becomes completely transformed when somebody says that they'll buy it for $120,000, right? The art levels have been flipped up entirely. But so far, nothing about this material object has really changed, right? And then, now things are about to get super fucked up. David, motherfucking David DeTuna, this motherfucker, shows up. Eats the banana. Not only does he eat the banana, he says it's a performance art piece and he gives it a name. That is so relevant. What, what do we do with this information? David has given the piece an entirely new name. 
what what just happened? Did like some like artistic mitosis just happen? Is it two pieces now? David has given this piece his own title. Does that mean that David is consuming quite literally <laughs> all the art that happened up until that point and incorporating it into his new piece, The Hungry Artist? I would say so in some ways, right? What is David's piece? David's piece isn't simply eating a banana. David's piece is eating this banana that somebody has already agreed to eat a hundred and spend a hundred and twenty thousand dollars on. <laughs> David is a genius. <laughs> Ooh, David, David, David. I do love that he didn't care because, you know, I, I, I would like to think I would eat the banana as well. But you never know when you're dealing with rich people what kind of bullshit could happen. They're going to lock him up in debtor's prison. They're going to deport him or something. I don't know where David's from. David, we love you. But what just happened? Like, is this now a new art piece? I guess it could be, right? But is it still, it's, is it still the original art piece? I don't know. I don't fucking know. I would say... Shit. I don't know. Is it new? Is it what? What happened? What is the hungry art artist? <laughs> Falter figure says, "If I ate the banana, I'd have an anxiety attack." <gasps> David looks so chill. Like I don't think I've ever seen anyone eat a hundred and twenty thousand dollar art piece in a more chill way than David. David looked like he had no fucks left to give. You know, and David looked like he was a bit of an older man. He's probably seen some shit in his art career. He was like, you know what? I don't give a fuck about none of this shit. And David already knew that this would be an instant hit. And it was. Look at us here. Here, celebrating David. David's piece, The Hungry Artist. I mean, clearly David's piece relies on these other elements already existing the fact that this already was an art piece and it's kind of a nice title because as the hungry artist he has not only consumed a banana he has literally consumed an art piece <laughs> to make it his art piece it's kind of like kirby you know kirby swallows you and takes your thing and now is kirby with pikachu ears or whatever that's kind of what david was doing to maurizio david is kirby and he essentially swallowed maurizio and his comedian piece and then david has the banana now and david is the artist the hungry artist that has just consumed maurizio's piece and maurizio's banana both the presentation of the thing and the thing itself and come up with a new art piece so that's fine. That's good. <laughs> That's good enough for me. But now what happens to the comedian? Where has the comedian gone? Hmm? What happens? Is, is the comedian still, does it remain uninterrupted? They had to put a new banana on the wall. I wish that the artist would release a statement. I'm sure he will. <laughs> we'll have a sequel to this upload if he does. Stay tuned. Make sure you come back. But what the fuck? What the fuck? And then this art, this art, direct the gallery owner one of the co-owners said this is what we should talk about now the co-owner said that let's go back to this quote because it was very profound this is what we should talk about now okay <laughs> he did not destroy the artwork the banana is the idea <laughs> the banana is the idea what the fuck do you think he meant by that? The banana is the idea. The banana is the idea of what, guy? Huh? The banana is the idea of what? What is the idea of a banana? Hmm? What the fuck is the idea of a banana? Can I get an answer? I mean, to give my own, I would say that the idea of a banana <laughs> is, that most of us have is a banana is a thing that, um, you know, has a pretty specific aesthetic presentation. It looks kind of like the thing in this thumbnail, especially when it's ripe. 
you know, when it starts to go brown or whatever. I don't know. I don't eat bananas personally because I hate that they're so squishy. I like the flavor but can't stand the texture and the squishiness. But, you know, we basically all conceptualize and understand bananas, I would say, as a thing that many people eat. We call it a fruit. Fruit is a category of a thing that we created to describe some of these things that we eat that are fruits. They possess the characteristics of the other things that we call fruits, right? That's the idea of a banana. But this motherfucker said, the banana is the idea. What does that fucking mean? Is he trying to say that the idea of the banana is integral to the art piece? That's all that ever mattered? It's not about the banana in and of itself? If that's what he's trying to say, I mean, that kind of seems well supported by the evidence, right? Because if you remember, I told you to remember this, one of the conditions of the art piece was that the owner can replace the banana as they wish. So really, the artist has said from onset that it doesn't, the banana is not necessarily intrinsic to the piece. Though, though, and this is why I wish we had some clarifying statements from Maurizio, big man on campus himself, he said the owner, the owner can replace the banana as they see fit. He didn't say David <laughs> could replace the banana as he sees fit, okay? He did not say that. Do you think that that greatly influences anything going on here? I don't think probably necessarily. Do you guys think so? I, I don't really think that uh, Maurizio necessarily envisioned that David <laughs> would arise and eat this banana. Though maybe he did. Who fucking knows? Um... I think the idea, though, is that the banana is not really uh, necessary. And this makes me think of um, this famous piece by, what's his fucking name? The pipe, this pipe is not a pipe. What's that motherfucker's name? Oh, it's been so long since I was at art school. Magritte. Rene Magritte. Another French asshole. <laughs> Sorry, you know what? I actually am pretty sure I'm French. I'm not totally sure, but uh, so don't take it personally. This is a lot of this. This is self French hatred. I don't know because I haven't met my dad, so that's just more hatred. My French dad abandoned me. He denies I exist. This is my relationship with French people. I don't even know if that motherfucker's French. Okay, it's deep. Don't. It's not about you. Anyway. The pipe is not the pipe. That's, this is what it makes me think of. Clearly what is meant by this painting, this uh, very famous painting by Rene Magritte, who knows what year it's from, let's check. Why the fuck not? I'm on the internet. I could do whatever I want. I could learn whatever I want. I could look up stuff. Rene Magritte, the pipe is not the fucking motherfucking motherfucking stupid fucking pipe. Um... Uh pipe <laughs> what year is this shit 1929 okay here we go it's called the treachery of images Ooh, so deep um so clearly what is meant by this statement unless i'm missing something is that this painting of a pipe is not really a pipe <laughs> it's a painting of a pipe right like duh you know I, what do you think the purpose of this piece is, you know? Because it's like, yeah, no shit, it's not a pipe, you know? Did he feel like, like, what was revelatory about that statement, you know? You know? Was it to, like, because I know this is from 1929. This is supposed to be, like, a time where a lot of artists were coming to do things like critique, um the historically representative mode of painting where a lot of painters kind of worked in this classical traditional mode where basically even though they weren't necessarily trying to be perfectly representational uh they were essentially in many ways trying to capture something sublime uh that is ultimately accessed by vision and then recreated by the painter on the canvas you know, and so even if it wasn't understood to be like, you know, some perfect, perfect rendition of what our human eye sees when we look at a thing like a pipe, in some ways, 
Um, there was almost like metaphysical justifications and language in some of the way that historically people have come to talk about things like representational painting and what its purpose was. So I assume that the reason he put this is not a pipe was sort of to be like, just so you know, maybe the mode of painting isn't to be literally representational. And it kind of makes sense for the time frame because from there, of course, she just got more and more abstracted. I won't say more and more abstract because like Renee has so graciously, graciously <laughs> made known with his piece, The Treachery of Images, art, even the most representational art was always incredibly abstract, right? Even the painting of Mona Lisa is an abstract painting in the sense that Nothing is actually being captured, literally. I'm not actually capturing this woman, whoever the fuck the Mona Lisa is, and putting her into a canvas. I am only capturing some sort of abstract essence of this woman, which for Da Vinci, you know, was his visual impressions of her um, through the lens of his own vision and then through the lens of the hands of the painter. Uh, it undergoes multiple abstractions to end up as this thing, the piece. And then the piece itself is an abstraction of so much going on here. God damn. Art is so deep, you know? <laughs> Leslie says, honestly, what a waste of a perfectly good nainer. But David ate it! This isn't a waste. Look at this amazing fun time that we're having together because of all this we get to talk about a banana duct tape to the wall and art and stuff i think that's so great i'm so thankful for everything that transpired up until this moment because this is how i have fun this is the best night of my life guys do you understand me <laughs> so much fun anyway so so I want to play something really quick. It's a clip from a film. I'll tell you about it in one second. Because this is how I make have any fun. Sense. It this is the just best listen. night just of my vibe. life, this guys. Do you understand me? It's not even long at all. So it's much fun. Vibe. Anyway. Ready. So. So. A I want to play like something that. really quick. It's a clip from a film. I'll tell you about a it in a like second. That makes me want to kill. How could he look at it? Me. And this not is how I had to This is the best night I of my life, guys. You understand me? It's this guy is so much fun, guys. Anyway, yeah, I can find out. So, got some connections with some downtown sculptors. Most of them go through a bike store. I want to play like something that. real quick. It's a clip from... Something just happened. <laughs> Yo, some art just happened. Sorry, I don't know what happened. My voice is playing somehow over it. But anyway, that was a clip from this film. Yeah, guys, the art. Guys, shh, shh. The art is here with us. Art, if you're here, say something. Well, I think it just did. We have been blessed with the art gods. Thank you. Art gods, you're here. Anyway, this is a clip from a film. You probably got none of that. I didn't realize that there was audio playing. I guess YouTube is playing the fucking... I don't know, because I'm not listening to it as I'm doing this, because I'm not stupid. But anyway, um, there's this film called The Italian Machine by David Cronenberg. It's from 1976, I believe. Many of you... Yes, 76. Many of you are familiar with David Cronenberg, obviously, one of the greatest directors to ever live, and with whom I share a birthday, bitch. How's that, huh? Huh? Take that. Me and David Cronenberg got the same birthday, and that feels very validating, because I feel like we have a lot of the same interests, especially about art. And this film, The Italian Machine by David Cronenberg, is something I really recommend everybody watch especially if you're interested in such bullshit as what we've been discussing tonight um because this piece this film it's a short film it's only 23 minutes long and there's a decent transfer on youtube but it's really not very nice i would definitely suggest like 
torrenting or purchasing if you even can because we definitely support david um finding a better uh quality of it and i think that this film really puts a lot of david's other work into perspective or at least an interesting perspective that i think a lot of people might not expect from david david uh was basically on some uh (laughs) banana art commentary himself with this film i don't want to give all of it away but basically the excerpt i'm trying to play uh is from the beginning of this film where this film i'll basically give you the premise uh without ruining anything so don't worry watch it right after this upload is done and get excited it's my favorite david cronenberg film really because even though i don't think it's the best made and it's not a feature film or anything i think that it's just like it's it's almost like an art artist statement by david which i love so much so basically um these motorcycle enthusiasts uh have found out that a very rare motorcycle has been purchased by some local uh motorcycle dealer and it's actually very relevant to this discussion because this film is called the italian machine because the motorcycle is italian what the fuck is up with these italians tonight i'm italian by the way and i'm from jersey (laughs) no big deal no big deal anyway um so these motorcycle enthusiasts have found out that this super rare italian motorcycle has been purchased by a local motorcycle dealer and these guys are like motor motorcycle fucking nerds they're so excited to see this bike so they go to the dealer and ask him if they can see it and he doesn't have it he only has a photograph because he has sold this thing himself for an amazing amount of money to an art dealer an art dealer that doesn't want to ride the motorcycle he wants the motorcycle to sit in his living room as an art sculpture and this infuriates the motorcycle enthusiast and this is the clip i was trying to play where this man basically loses his fucking shit over this idea he cannot stand the idea that somebody would take a thing that serves such a clear function a function that he appreciates very much and wants to fulfill the function of he can't believe that some asshole would buy this thing and take it away from him and all the other motorcycle enthusiasts and put it in a fucking living room to do nothing except sit and be stared at the idea is that the motorcycle exists to be a motorcycle and to fulfill the function of a motorcycle and from there it gets super fucking deep i won't even fucking tell you but essentially the thesis of the film is this you know things are what they are you know and even when things are art they are also what they are i think (laughs) that clearly you can see what kind of a corollary now I'm dr- I'm drawing here between this fucking banana, you know? The banana, while it may be art in this piece, is also ultimately a banana. And ultimately, we are reminded throughout the transformation of this amazing, incredible, transcendent performance art piece by two performance artists, I would say, ultimately, by Maurizio and by David, We are reminded of what the true function, if there is one, at least in our human understanding of it, what the true function of the banana is, right? What is the idea of the banana? (laughs) As the uh, owner of the art gallery has so famously put forward, the banana is the idea. The banana is the idea. The banana is the idea. Yes, yes. And this is what the piece is all about. The idea of the banana. What is the idea of the banana? To be a banana. And David ate the fucking banana. It's about the fucking idea of the banana. The piece is about the fucking banana. (laughs) Oh my god. But how do I know? What do you mean how do I know? I know it because I feel it in my fucking heart. The banana ultimately... No matter what kind of dumb art bullshit is happening around it, fulfilled its purpose. (laughs) At least, (laughs) its purpose to us as humans and how we interact with it. We ate that. David ate that. So you know what? Thank you, David. 
Who's team David? Who's team Maurizio? <laughs> and who's team gallery owner? <laughs> prove it? Prove what, Vinny? What would you like me to prove? Let's get some feedback, okay? I think that I've offered... I have offered a... a, a <laughs> I have offered a, an argument. Falter just says... Falter just says... Is the best art about itself? I believe that it is. And this is part of why I put this title here. And this is an idea that I have tried and succeeded and also failed to reiterate on this channel. But something that I believe so much and I want to express clearly. So I'll try it one more time here. <laughs> I do believe that art is ultimately about itself. You know, because like I said before, when I defined art for us, which everyone seemed to agree with, art is a presentation of a thing, and it's also a thing in and of itself, right? And even without a literal presentation of it, without fucking Maurizio to say, look, I did this thing, you know? Well, without Maurizio for this piece, we wouldn't know that the banana was art, right? So this is why we said it was performance art. But to give the example I gave earlier, you find a painting in a flea market, right? And you, without this a literal artist to present it, we immediately know based on the presentation that this thing exists as a painting. It exists as a thing to be judged for its aesthetic properties. It was a conscious creation that arose from the intelligence of some lone human creator who created it with the purpose of externalizing some aesthetic concepts into an art piece for a presentation. The thing itself is the presentation in this instance. And in this way, every art piece essentially has to offer a justification for how it exists. Why it exists, rather. This is how art works, right? It's just what it is. The art is the justification for why it exists. When I look at a painting, you know? The painting is in itself the justification. Whether or not I like the fucking painting, whether or not I give a shit, I think it's the best painting, it's the worst painting, whatever the fuck, it doesn't matter. It's presenting to me an argument for why it exists, right? That's why it does exist. So this is why I say art is about itself. And why I also say that I think the best art is art that's more about itself. So this is why a piece like Maurizio's Banana is kind of whatever. It's kind of funny. I like it. Everything, I mean, we agreed. I think you all agree. Actually, I would love to hear from the person who said no, or maybe you've changed your mind, if you still believe that it is not performance art. But, you know... What I judge about this banana piece is ultimately what conscious decisions were made in the presentation of this thing, right? Because this is a thing that we said is essential to art. The fact that it is a conscious creation, right? It's not incidental. I don't drop the thing and it's art. Unless I say it's art, then there we go. And then I might say that's shitty art because you didn't even think about it. That's dumb. But it's still fucking art because you said so, right? We already established this. So I don't really revere this piece. No, I don't. I think I revere David the most because as he too was doing our performance, I think we all agreed David has some balls and we got to give it to the guy. He ate this thing without knowing what kind of legal penalties he would face. He ate this thing knowing it would be absurdly hilarious so we could have these kinds of discussions afterwards. Um, and he was right. Um, so, you know, I mean, the thing was just begging to be eaten. Let's be real, you know. As soon as they announced a banana was duct taped to the wall and it's art, uh, so many people were like, I'm going to eat it. You know, you know, <laughs> think about how many people in the audience's hearts dropped when David was the one to go forward and eat the banana. I bet like at least five people were like, fuck, I was going to do it. Shit, why did I wait this long? You know, like, come on. That had to be an idea in more than one person's head, right? Anyway, I appreciate David the most. I think he did the best job here just because he he 
pulled off the best performance. Maurizio, whatever. You know, you're a jokester. You're a prankster. You're from Italy. Whatever the fuck you're doing, guy. Great for you. I'm sure he thought someone would eat it. It almost seems like he's tempting the crowd to eat it. You know, here we go. It all fucking worked. But I don't really know if he planned it. I think either way, he thought it would be a success. Maybe I'll just duct tape a banana to the wall and sell it for an absurd amount of money. Of course, it'll go viral, which it did. And then, hey, if it does, maybe someone will eat it. Then it'll go double viral, which it did. And it will be double art, which it became. Then it could become triple art. When you put a new banana in, which it was. Basically, there's so much art. You know, it's basically like string theory for art. (laughs) If someone could map out effectively exactly what happened here, it would probably be multidimensional, right? I don't know how many dimensions this art is existing on, but it's definitely some quantum physics type shit, right? There's like, there's a bunch of dimensions happening here, so whatever. This is some art math. If someone wants to map out the theory for us, I would love that. I started making the charts. I'll give you mine. I can even oversee your research. If any of you are great at math or science, I'm not. I drove myself crazy trying to make this chart about the art in and of itself and the presentation being altered. I'm just not good with that stuff. It's math. Anyway. Uh, wow. That was, that was a great talk. It's been 55 minutes. Holy shit. All right, let's get some feedback. Last five minutes, let's discuss ideas. Who has something to say, maybe something that is bothering them, that you find to have been not addressed in this discussion? Like, what, what are you feeling in your hearts? Peel theory. <laughs> did we ever find out, did anybody look up where the peel went? Because I think this is important, obviously. Where the fuck did the peel go? <laughs> oh, I want to know. Where's the video of this guy eating the piece? Shit. David, David Detuna, the man of the hour, eating the art, giving our power. David Detuna. All right, I'm going to watch it right here because I don't know if anyone else has. Let's see. All right. David has eaten the banana. He's announcing his piece, the hungry artist. <laughs> All right, let's see him. Oh, oh shit, the banana's out of view. It looks like he ate it. Fuck. Where's the peel? Shit. I lost sight of him. Oh, damn. Does anyone know? Oh, shit. What do we do? I have no idea where the peel went. This is a great question. Someone needs to find out. Please, when you find out, let us know. I'm seeing the footage in the back room. I don't see the peel. I imagine it wasn't discarded unless David just kind of discarded it. Maybe, you know what I imagine? Someone probably took the banana from him. I mean, there's a point where this woman ag- approaches him pretty aggressively and is like, why did you do that? Um, I imagine somebody in this group of people that comes up to join the woman probably took the banana from him. <laughs> oh, so funny. Falter says... The fact that the guy that bought the banana could have donated $100,000 of food. But then we wouldn't have this ridiculous art piece falter like we said. This ridiculous, absurdly high exchange of money. This high amount uh, is integral to the piece. If no one bought it for a 100000 art piece, if they just gave it to starving people instead, then what the fuck would we be talking about, huh? 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 Nothing. Be grateful. Be grateful we have these absurdly ridiculous fucking stupid Italian pieces of art to talk about. You should be thankful. What about the duct tape? Any significance? You know, he didn't say fuck Don Honix in this original thing. I don't see anything. He says that you could replace the banana. Didn't say anything about the duct tape. I imagine he purposefully left that out just to be like, you know... Just to, like, give people a little bit of mystery. Like, maybe if they decide to change it, they'll change it themselves. If they don't, they can feel as if they've preserved something original about the piece. I mean, that's what I think. Falter, I think the money exchange is part of the performance. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it becomes a part of the performance. Of course... I mean, we don't know what was planned and what is not. I honestly assume none of this was planned just because I've, you know, 
been uh, in the art world for a minute now. Not in the art world, but witness to the art world and a graduate of SAIC where this kind of stuff was happening all the time. Like, more ridiculous shit happens every day. I've seen it myself. (laughs) I have seen it myself. So, I don't necessarily think that this guy, uh, you know, assumed that the exchange of money would happen. He might have assumed it would happen simply because he's pseudo-famous and has sold art pieces for a lot of money before, and this is Art Basel. And, you know, I'm sure that he, like, also did this specific piece because he felt as if it would probably go viral or something, and he was absolutely correct. That could have even been a plan, you know? Like, who launched this story, you know? But I kind of doubt it. I mean, you do something crazy enough. Um, this kind of goes into a little bit of our last discussion. It's kind of shocking, right? It's shocking that someone would do something so ridiculous and say that it's art. But look, look what happens. You are rewarded for doing this absurd thing. And your art gets to be in all the newspapers. And everybody gets to talk about it. You want to make something actually, you know not absurd or maybe absurd for other reasons i don't know i i feel like this piece exists to be a spectacle and i'm sure maurizio feels great about that you know he calls himself the fucking the fucking joker or whatever the fuck he's a prankster he's he's an old trickster up to his old wily ways sneaking around eating little caesars like a little italian devil Chris, I think the duct tape is a simple way to glue it up so as to focus on the banana. Because, like, imagine if he nailed it to the wall. (laughs) True. I think it also... (laughs) I mean, I'm sure it was... I'm sure it was completely incidental, you know? If he nailed it to the wall first, that probably would have been the piece, honestly. That's how I honestly feel. He probably duct taped it and then was like, yeah. You know, actually, if I'm not mistaken, in the CNN piece that I read, I believe that he said, the artist said, (laughs) that the idea came to him because he had gotten in the habit of duct taping bananas to the wall when he was traveling or something, and it made him feel good. I don't fucking know, dude. You know how much cocaine is probably going through all these people's minds? I don't know about David. David doesn't seem like he does cocaine (laughs) because David looked chill as fuck. Though, sometimes when someone's super geeked on coke, I have to say, they kind of take on this aesthetic of chillness. So who knows? Maybe David was blasted too, but I feel like there's so much cocaine involved in this banana saga. I don't know about you guys. They're in Miami as well. Like, come on. So much cocaine. Let's just be real. Doesn't have to make sense. All right, anyway, it's been an hour and two minutes. I hope that you found this conversation intriguing. I hope anyone who's not sur- subscribe to this YouTube station will please do so. Phenomenology Club. Also, please give me a thumbs up, please. Just because YouTube, like, does math with it and stuff. Maybe we can go viral. Maybe this can be art. Maybe this can be the next, like, chapter in the banana art saga. Let's give it a name just in case. What do we call this chapter of the banana art? How about, um, shit. Fuck. Shit. Fuck. I need a name. Oh. The, no. Shit. Damn it. (sighs) I don't want to say the aftermath, because what if it's not the ending? Someone, please. The Banana Chronicles? That's terrible. I hate that. I hate that so much. Well, while I'm still thinking, let me give one more shameless. Unpeeled. Unpeeled. There we go. Filked on Honix. Thank you. That's perfect. Unpeeled. I love it. It's perfect. It captures the original kind of... It it encompasses the imagery of the banana, the symbolism. 
It also alludes to the fact that we have just had this discussion where we attempted together to deconstruct exactly what happened here, what 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 was art and where and why. Thank you so much for embarking on this discussion with me. Like I said, please subscribe to the YouTube and also to the Spotify because I know a lot of people like to listen when they're driving and stuff and their phone's in their pocket and stuff and you're at the gym and stuff. I think it's a lot easier to do that on Spotify. We're called Phenomenology Club on Spotify as well. Thank you so much. Everybody go make some fucking art. Art rules. Yeah, fuck yeah. See you later. Goodbye.